Welcome to another episode of The Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. Today, Mom, Dad, and Lando are heading out across the lake. The boys and I had already headed south a few days ago and are spending some time with our extended family, who live about four hours south of here. We always have so much fun spending time with our friends, cousins, uncles, and aunts and especially with our Opa and Oma. We look forward to when the ice is fully frozen and they can all come up and visit us here at the lake. Dad is an inspirational speaker and has been invited to give the opening keynote address at a conference in Mexico. After two years of almost no face-to-face -face conferences, Dad is sure happy to be back giving talks in person again. We're heading down to the airport now in the big city. My goodness, it's so busy. I, when I come down here, which isn't very often, I realize what a simple, quiet life we live up there on the lake. And uh, I certainly enjoy the peace and quiet. Um, I spent many, many years in the hectic uh, hustle and bustle of the city. But um, anyway, I. I'm going to be heading down to Mexico tomorrow morning for a, a talk at a conference there in Cancun. Really looking forward to giving that talk and then uh, I look forward to getting back to the lake. Of course, a little alone time together as a couple is always a good thing and mom and dad enjoy a delicious dinner before checking into the hotel for the night. Normally, mom goes along with dad when he is speaking in beautiful tropical places, but this trip is going to be a short one. Pretty much just a there and back. After a successful time in Cancun, dad began the long flight home and mom and Pete set out across the lake to pick him up at our local regional airport. Overnight, a deep snow had fallen on the lake. The weight of the snow caused cracks in the ice, pushing water up on top of the ice and into the snow. The trail that took only 20 minutes to cross yesterday now became almost impassable and took over three hours pushing, digging, and ice clearing before they finally reached the jeeps. I think our biggest lesson so far overwintering at the island has been the unpredictability of the ice and the need to be flexible and prepared for anything. Eventually, we were all home together again. And after a few days rest, the boys decided to pack up some gear and go exploring. Jackery and that's it. One more better.
Grab the back of this there. You sure you want this uh, metal plated one? Is that better than the plastic? Nice. Just making our way across. I'm sitting in the back. Obviously, Dad's driving, and Dan's behind us with his my sled, which just got back. We got a new sleigh for it, but uh, definitely started a little later than what we had hoped. So, just taking her slow. We also it was only calling for like a couple millimeters of snow. As you can see, it's uh, it's a pretty good little snowfall here. Green Lake is a, a lake off of our own. Um, it's a bit of a drive, so this will take a good 25 minutes or so. It's super remote, there's no cabins, and the only access in the summertime is by portaging, uh, by a canoe. And then in the wintertime we can take, you know, snow dogs or snow machines of any kind, really, uh, by a trail through the woods to get on the ice. The ice there, it's a, it's a pretty protected, smaller lake, so... The ice there is, uh, this is bumpy. <laughs> the ice there is at least two feet thick. So even though it's snowed a lot, it's not pushing any water up, causing slush, which is nice, which is definitely the case on our lake right now. The shorelines don't, uh, don't freeze up as much, boarding on the rocks. And then when it gets heavy, it just pushes a lot of water up. So the reason these trails are so bumpy that we're going on right now is uh, we made them when it was slushy. It was super hard to get out. We did that one day. It took a whole day pretty much to get out. And uh, when it froze up, it creates a nice ice trail. But man, places you get stuck or where even snowmobiles and the snow dogs turn a little bit and created all these edges and waves that you bump on. So for me sitting in the back here, it's a little bit bumpy. Yeah, we'll make it. I'm looking forward to a nice warm tent. I'm trying to catch some walleye. You guys went up there the other day was it all slush or? Yeah. And then the trail that through the woods, is that better? Or no? It's better, but it'll take longer. So Pete's heading up that way to check if we can use that trail. We've had some problems with it because it got really slushy. But if he can blaze the trail that way, it's going to save us a lot of time. What's the scenario? Beauty. Yeah? The trail, uh, was slush before when we first went on it. That all froze up. You nice. can haul butt on it. So sweet. That's the straightaway, and then it's into the forest, and we're on Green Lake. Awesome. Yeah. Let's do it. Pretty tough going here with uh, so much snow falling, but so far so good. It's got a little ways left getting cold out here. I think it's supposed to be minus 25. It's not the worst night of the winter, that's for sure, but uh, sitting in the back of a sled is uh, makes it enough that you want to be warm. On the other side of this forest is the lake that we're heading up to. There's no cabins up there. It's really remote and wild. And it has walleye, which is 
what we're after today. Oh yeah, some nice fishes in here, <laughs> up and down, up and down. All right, we are now on the lake, and uh, all we gotta do now is find a camping spot and uh, get set up. We are there, and that snow is deep. Whew. All right, we made it. That's a lot of snow. Here, straight off. Nice. Sweet. And then the, the middle. We got shelter. I'm gonna shovel a bit more. Have the main entrance facing the snowmobile. This way? Yeah. Is that big enough or should I do a few more? Let's get some light in that tent. It's a good feeling. It's already way warmer. All right, I'm gonna hang these guys up. There we go. What a trip. The trail worked out, we prepped that ahead of time, and now we're just gonna shovel. Dan's doing that right now. Already it's like 15 degrees warmer in here. This is an insulated, um, it's an otter tent. It's just a uh, ice fishing tent, but it's all insulated. We've got some foam mats to place on the ground, and with it shoveled, it should be pretty warm. We also brought reindeer pelts and sleeping pads, and of course a heater, so I mean, we're, we're golden for tonight. So, yeah, just bringing equipment like Dad's doing right now. We'll have ourselves a base camp. I'm ready to get some holes drilled and start trying to catch some fish. Hey, Da. Let's get those uh, mats. Yeah, I'm trying to find them. Ah. Imagine uh, if we left them. No, I'm sure we took them. I just don't remember which one. They're there. Perfect. Just got these basic floor mats. Bring that one. These will help for when it gets warm in here. You can just lay out there like those basic gym pads. We'll open them up and uh, give me a hand with them. Sure. I can probably do it. Yeah, we'll build ourselves a floor. Comfy. It's way warmer in here, eh? Yeah. Already. Makes a huge difference. Once we get that propane heater going, we should throw snow on these flaps. We're just leaving the machines running for a bit because we need the light. Um, we just don't want to kill those batteries, obviously. There, there's a backup pull start if you end up inadvertently killing your batteries. You can still start your machine, so that's a good thing. But uh, now it's just a matter of setting up camp and uh, warmth shelter and then food so those are the mats uh, we're gonna use our bags to lay out over an area there's enough room with the rubber mats for us to sleep on dry and comfy 
We've got a huge propane heater. It'll keep us warm and everything nice and dry in here. We also brought a couple reindeer pelts and really big thick wool blankets, so we should be really good. It's gonna be a cozy night. Just gotta uh, find a way to keep everything dry because taking things in, it's all got a bit of powder snow on it. We start laying out sleeping bags right now. It'll all be wet. So we all have these moccasins. Um, we'll wear those inside, keep our boots to this side of the cabin. We should be able to manage some of the wet. I'm gonna do a fish finder down in this corner of the Wow. Huh. It's gone a foot down and not even through yet. There she is. That's some good thick ice. This is a real handy little thing. The way it works, you put it down in the hole and then tilt it up and pull out the ice. So it goes down and as you tilt it, it becomes a flat. That way you're not pushing the ice down and then trying to pull it up. Kind of nice. So what we doing with this one is drill the second hole so we can get a fish finder down there get the uh, transducer in there and see what we got all right so we're in uh, 15 feet of water and right now I've got the uh, a little lure down at eight let's drop it I don't think we need to be too low between eight and 10 feet deep. We're just jigging away, making some noise with a clicker bait. And uh, see if we can attract some fish. We know there's good walleye in this lake. We just don't know where they're hiding this tonight, but we'll find them. Yeah, I set up the alarm for the fish. Two fish. Sounds like it might be fish. And I felt something. Dang it. It'll come. Heat these seats up so we're going to sit in You got it?
doesn't take long to cook up the meat. We'll uh, take it inside after that and enjoy it outside of, or out of the wind. It's not that, I mean, it's cold, but I'm not feeling cold because of these suits. They're really, they really protect you. And uh, I can stay out here quite comfortably. All right, we're just getting some nice steaks on the fire here. We've got good coals. And uh, the open flame is kind of dying down, so that's perfect. Some good heat. And uh, I think in the back in the hut there we have all the spices and uh, some bell peppers and just enough to make a delicious meal. And no matter what, when you're cooking over an open fire, it's going to taste good. All right, these, these guys are done, looking good. We're gonna take them inside where it's warm and start cutting into them. Let me get my knife. I'll come back and do this stuff. All right, we've had uh, something to eat. And we've got the heater going. Our beds are all set up. It's uh, cozy in here. So we didn't have any luck on the tip-ups uh, last night, but uh, this was our first time going after walleye, which we hear is in this lake, and uh, walleye can be pretty hard to catch. So I guess we'll just be trying out different baits, seeing what they like here, and we'll definitely be back over the next couple weeks. Even though we didn't catch anything, we had an awesome camp, and I think we're just gonna pack up and head back out. I got a satellite message from Carol. She's got coffee on. We're, I don't know, 20 minutes or half an hour of bushwhacking and then we'll have a nice hot coffee. We were going to make it up here, but I think coffee in the cabin sounds better to me and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Carol and see how her night was. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pack up and go.
Well, we'll be back. This area of the lake is right at the end of this smaller lake. So there's no worry of skidoos or anything else coming into where our little camp is. Uh, marked it with the big stick in the ground. And so if we just maintain that little spot, we can always come in, set up a tent, and then keep trying for those walleye. It'll be a fun day when we catch one. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road. Good boy. <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, whoa.